Have you received a notice in the mail that sounds something like this? Your Paycheck Protection Program loan has been paid off. The SBA determined that the amount you, the borrower, requested forgiveness on your PPP loan was fully forgiven by the SBA and remitted to the forgiven amount to your bank. Have you gotten a notice like this in the mail or maybe one like this that came directly from the SBA that's at the top, has their letterhead? Notice of Paycheck Protection Program Forgiveness Payment where it says the borrower, lender of record, SBA loan number, loan approval date, loan disbursement amount, amount of forgiveness, forgiveness amount remitted, and forgiveness payment date. Do you have one of these? Has this happened for you yet? Well, if it hasn't, let's get that taken care of. I have tons of videos on PPP forgiveness, so hopefully you've seen those. That's probably why you're here. But if you have gotten one of these letters, that means it is time for you to write off the PPP loan, to wash your hands of it, to get rid of it in your accounting system and to move on. <laughs> Who's ready to move on after PPP? I know I am, um, but this is still kind of causing a little bit of accounting problems for those of us who have had these letters come through and sometimes bookkeepers and accountants are not exactly sure what to do or if you're doing your own bookkeeping you might not be exactly sure how to handle this. So that is what this video is about. We are going to dive into QuickBooks Online. I'm going to show you the steps you need to take in order to record this. So a little while back, I did do a video telling you how to record the journal entries related to this transaction when forgiveness happens. Um, but if you're not into journal entries or you, that just seems too complicated to go and try to figure that out yourself, follow the steps in this video. I will link the other one in the um I'll put a little card above. So you, if you want to check out that one, you can um, find that easily. I'll also put the link to that video in the description box below. And there was a um, accounting download associated with that as well. So you can grab that for free, totally free on my website. So I will link that below. Um, but this video is actually walking through QuickBooks Online. Now I use QuickBooks Online. That is my favorite small business accounting system. So that's what I'm using for this demo. However, essentially the steps of what you're doing here can be done in any accounting system. So, you know, adding an account, booking a journal entry, these kind of things, as long as you have the ability to make those kind of edits to your accounting system, you can do this in any of the systems that you have. Now, if you aren't in an accounting system, I'm going to say it again, get into QuickBooks Online. It is my favorite. I like it a lot. There is a link to a discount in the description box below. So check that out. So if this kind of information is helpful to you, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you like the video and also click the little bell next to the subscribe so that you will get notified when we have a new video out. Remember that we do videos once a week over here and you will want to see those when they come out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hop into QuickBooks Online and figure out how to account for your PPP loan forgiveness. All right, here we are in the QuickBooks Online sample company, and I am going to walk you through what we need to do to um, get a proper recording of a PPP loan to begin with so that we can back it out when we actually have forgiveness. So um, some of you might have recorded it correctly to begin with, um, but I have been seeing that sometimes people, when they first got the money on the PPP loan, um, they put it as income. And so that this isn't going to make any sense if now when we go to record the forgiveness, um, we, <laughs> so now it's not going to make any sense if we go to record forgiveness because the journal entry that we need to post in order to close everything out won't make tons of sense. So let's just kind of start from the beginning. So first, what you're going to do is you're going to go down here to accounting and you're going to go to chart of accounts, and then you're going to go to new and you're going to create a new account. So we're going to create a new long-term liability, and we're just going to call it a notes payable for now, and we're going to rename it PPP loan. Now, if you've got two PPP loans, you could do PPP one and PPP two and do two separate accounts, or if you just want to put it all into one account, that is fine as well. I've been seeing people do that as well. And if you want to make it a sub account of maybe a notes payable or something like that, you can if you have multiple notes and you like to see them on your chart of accounts. And then um, you will put uh, receive, you'll put a description in here, save and close. 
All right, so now when you look through our chart of accounts, and we can do a quick search here, we can go to PPP, and there is our PPP loan, all right? And we'll see there's a zero balance. So in order for us to get a balance on there, we need to create a transaction. So we're going to create a journal entry, and you will make this date the day that you receive the loan. So let's say this is a PPP2 loan, and you got it on March 1st of 2021. You will go, you would have recorded the cash. So the cash would have gone into the bank account, whatever that is. Let's see what their, uh, let's say it went into your checking account and it was $20,000. And you would put that there. And then the offsetting entry, so that would be a debit because it's increasing the asset account. And then the offsetting credit, which creates the loan balance, is the PPP loan account that we just created. All right, and if you're using any journal entry numbers or anything like that, the real critical things we need to think about with journal entries is making sure we have reference, making sure we have notes, and then also making sure that the date is correct. So make sure that that is on the actual date that you receive the cash. Um, so if you did not do this for some reason when you first got the money, you could go back and change it um, before your 2021 um, taxes are filed to make sure that we get this correct on the balance sheet and the income statement. So that makes, so we're going to save and close that. And I'll show you what that looks like since we just did a journal entry. I'm going to go and I'm going to show you the balance sheet. And since we haven't taken it off, you'll see right now under the balance sheet, there is a $20,000 PPP loan. So I just created this transaction. And if I click on it and I change the date range, I will be able to see that entry that I created right there. Okay. So let's say that I applied for PPP forgiveness and I'm ready to go and the bank sent me a message and they said, hey, good news, your PPP loan is now forgiven. Yay. Um, we've been seeing these, these letters come through. And if that's the case, what we're going to do is we're going to write it off. So now it might say you had your PPP loan forgiven of $20,000 along with interest of, let's say it was $300, okay? So if that's the case, um, if you're a cash basis accountant, uh, accounting, you actually don't have to really record that little bit of interest, so you can kind of not worry about that. If you're an accrual base, and we talk about this a little bit in the accounting for PPP video, um, you will want to record the um, income or the interest as well. But most of you are not going to need to worry about the interest, so just kind of really don't worry about that piece of it and just worry about the principle of the loan, which is the 20,000. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna go and create another, another account, okay? So this time, this is where we get, this is kind of critical, okay? So there's two, when you go to set up accounts, there's different types of income accounts. There's something called income, and this is your typical revenue of anything that you do in the business, like your normal operating income services or product sales. But then there's this option to have other income. And other income is actually put someplace different on the PL. So we do want to select other income. And then you can pretty much do anything you want here. I'm going to do other miscellaneous income. And then here we're going to go other income. PPP forgiveness, non-taxable, okay? So this situation, we are creating a, a new other income account, and this is where our forgiveness is going to go, so we need to make sure that this is in the accounting system. And then... Um, All right, so we're just going to write a brief description and save and close. All right, so now we have this as an option. So if I go to PPP, I can see the two income accounts that we created or the two accounts. So now when I go to PPP, so now when I go to PPP, I can see the two accounts that I created, the original liability and then the offsetting. This is what we're going to quote unquote close it out to is this other income account. So now that we see that the accounts are there and they're set up properly, we're going to go and create another journal entry. And this journal entry date is going to be on the date that we received the notice or whatever the notice from the bank 
whenever they made, gave you that notification that your loan has been forgiven. So they might have an actual date on the letter, um, but maybe if you found out about it on a certain date, but you didn't get a letter, you could just write it off as of that date. So let's say we got the um, letter in the mail today. I'm recording this on February 3rd. If that's the case, this is how we record it. We're going to write off. So to put a debit to a liability is to reduce it. So we're going to, okay, so I put a little note on here saying the forgiveness for PPP loan approved on 2-3. That's February 3rd. And then over here, I would go PPP again to find my account. And here's that other income line item that we recorded. Okay, so then it's there. It's going to do a credit to 20000 and we are good to go. What I would do is I'd go down here to attachments and attach a di digital copy so I would go down here to attachments and attach a digital copy of that letter from the SBA saying that it has been forgiven, okay? So you have some nice evidence for that. And then you click save and close. All right, so now let's go and look and see what that looks like if we were to go and look at the profit and loss. So I, this profit and loss is defaulted to include today's date. So where is it? It's not up here. It's not up here in income because that's where I'm seeing it for a lot of people. People are putting it in this regular, normal operating income, but we don't want to see that. We want it to see go all the way down here. We want it to be an other income, and there it is. Other income, PPP forgiveness, non-taxable, all right? So this is very, very important because we want to keep the PPP forgiveness out of your considerations when you're looking at your net operating income. Because if this PPP forgiveness is up here, then it's going to throw off what your P&L looks like. And you're going to think that you're way more profitable than you actually are from the operations of your business. So you want to make sure that it's outside of your operating income. And this is the number that we need to look at. So for Craig's business, I'm saying, hey, buddy, you probably need to um, look and see what you're doing because maybe you need to increase your profits a little bit. But if we had put this $20,000 up here in his income, it would have made his business look extremely profitable and he might not be making the right decisions because it would be throwing off, um, you know, basically what his bottom line looked like, okay? So um, I would definitely, definitely recommend anybody who's doing, who's recording their PPP loan correctly and then also writing it off correctly, make sure that it is in this other income line item and your net operating income is protected to look correct, okay? That this is what the actual operations of your business are showing as, um, as a number that's reliable and you kind of use this for the year of 2022 or 2021 um, as your, you know, the number that you actually look at to see if you're profitable. Most people and most businesses don't have a whole lot of other things that would show up in other income or other expense. Most of the time, these accounts really aren't used. So um, what I'm seeing is that usually it's just this one thing that's kind of being pulled out as other income. And so then for most clients and other people whose P&Ls I'm looking at, uh, we can use net operating income as sort of our new sort of profit number, okay? So I hope that is really helpful as you are going and looking at your own finances so that the reports coming out of your accounting system are reliable and understandable and that they're not being um, sort of falsely showing that you have a higher profit than you really do, okay? So I hope that makes sense for you guys. Please leave any questions that you have in the comment section below. I'd love to be able to answer any questions, especially around the uh, setting up and accounting for the PPP loan. Okay, you guys, I hope that was helpful. Remember that you can grab a couple downloads in the description box below and check out another video on accounting for PPP and PPP loan forgiveness. Um, so be, make sure you grab those downloads if you haven't already. And then, um, yeah, like this video if it was helpful. We love to know. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments section below, and we will see you soon. All right, bye.